All right, switching to cricket on the Sportsmax zone. In July, West Indies will face England in our three-match test series. That will mark the end of James Anderson's career. Fast bowler Kimar Roach has called on the Windies to rain on Anderson's parade with a win. And many cricket fans believe the only way that is possible is by garnering experience in the English conditions, which the Caribbean men have struggled with for years. Well, three of the Windies Test cricketers have taken this advice and are currently taking on stints in the ongoing county season, particularly standing out during the last round of the matches. Roach claimed an eight-wicket match haul in top of the table, Surrey's nine-wicket win over Warwickshire, including a second innings, a six for 46, taking his season tally to 14. Now, all-rounder Jason Holder stroked a classy unbeaten 123 not out, batting at number 8 for Worcestershire, who piled on 618 for 7, declared in the only time at bat in a draw with Kent. In the Division 2 Championship, Trinidad and Tobago Seymour Jaden Seals leads the wickets column, taking his tally to 23 with a five-wicket haul for Sussex in their nine-wicket loss to Glamorgan. Well, our international cricket commentator who took in some of the action in England, he joins us via Zoom. Good afternoon, Nikhil. How are you? Hi, good afternoon, Maria. Yeah, all good. Um, great to see the West Indian performances in England. Ahead of what you mentioned will be uh, an exhilarating test series, but a very important test series just to measure in terms of where the West Indies sort of are at in terms of this new resurgence of this Red Bull team. Right, and seeing that you got to have a close look at the action for some time, what are your thoughts on the quality of cricket being played in England and, of course, our West Indies players that would have represented? Yeah, it's a very high level, Maria. Um, when you think about some of our older players, the legend of, of the game, um, Sir Vivian Richards always speaks about the county level. Brian Lara is another one. Just in terms of what it did for their careers when they were sort of in the prime of it, being able to go away from test cricket but still have that sort of match intensity, obviously I think it's dropped off a bit from that level when they, when they played. But I think when I look in isolation at some of the conditions, for example, that Jada Seals played in at Hull uh, playing for Sussex, it is challenging. Look, I was in England. It was freezing cold. Us West Indians don't like anything. Uh, under 10 degrees and I'm telling you it was very cold and for Seals sort of to withstand that and still take wickets uh, to have the most wickets in Division 2 I think it's, it's really a remarkable achievement and Kimar Roach I think is more used to conditions there uh, because it's his third season playing for Surrey but someone like uh, Jason Holder to have his experience um, in the county championship ahead of what will be a return of test cricket for him because we haven't seen him in that Australia series. Obviously, he hasn't played since the South Africa series. I think it's massive in terms of the experience to get those guys back involved. Yeah, you know, you, you can never play enough cricket and you can never have enough experience. You always want to try to pick up wickets and, of course, get runs on your bat. I have to ask you, though, if you agree with what fast bowler Kimar Root said, calling on, of course, the Windies to rain on James, James Anderson's parade. And do you think we have what it takes to actually rain on his parade? Definitely. I think when you look at it, the West Indies obviously rained on a parade earlier this year. It was the Australian parade. Um, but look, Kimar Roach, there's a reason he's saying he wants to win that first test. He himself has got a phenomenal record at Lords where that first test will be played. He's got 11 wickets in two games. Many will remember that fight he took back in 2017. So, look, I definitely think it's possible. England with Brendan McCullum at the helm, they play a brand of cricket, which I think it always keeps you in the game. They will come at attack. Obviously, the pitches will be flat. But I think that high-risk approach, high-intensity, aggressive nature, it keeps the West Indies in the game and in a, with a great chance to win it. Uh, we saw what they did in 2020 when they had that COVID times. We challenged England in their home conditions. That was the last time we were there. Won a test match. And, look, who knows? The sky's the limit. I certainly think it's possible given a new group, a sort of, newborn belief in this test team under Andre Coley. And I think it's just certainly possible when you've got experienced guys like Roach, Jason Holder, and less experienced Jaden Seals. But the fact that they've been in these conditions know what to expect. I think it's massive. 
Yeah, Jason Holder, let me start with him, Nikhil, and talk to me about how important it is that he is playing um, red ball cricket at this stage, even though there is a T20 World Cup that is on the horizon. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, uh, Ricardo, because there were many questions about sort of his commitment to red ball cricket when he missed the Australia series. But I actually listened to his interview yesterday, and he was talking about the fact that he believes he's almost, with this Worcester team, found a sort of newborn interest within himself for red ball cricket. He's always mentioned in press conferences and interviews that the test game is his favorite format. But I think having spent so much time away prioritizing T20 cricket, obviously at the back end of, not back end of his career, but obviously into his 30s now, I think the fact that he did well in this Red Bull series has almost reminded him of his fond love and also how good he is at the format. Let's not forget, this is a guy back in 2021 who scored a double hundred against England. How many people have scored a double hundred in Test cricket? So I just think based on those factors, the fact that he was able to spend some time out there bowling with the Red Bull again, that Jukes ball, I think it just helped in terms of sort of stir a belief or a love back into him in terms of the Red Bull game. Yeah, given the fact that he did not take part in the Australia series, he turned that down to say that he wanted to focus on the T20 format of the game ahead of the World Cup. Um, how important was it that he did get in some Red Bull cricket at this stage especially if he wants to be involved in the England series, which I suspect he does, um, to, to almost send a message to the selectors to say, yes, you sent a team to Australia, you did well, but I'm still here and I still want to play. I think it's too far, Ricardo. Obviously, what we've seen from him is that he realizes, look, he's not going to be able to walk back in the team. You've got guys who came in in his place. Kevin St. Clair is one, Justin Graves, a few all-rounders who did well. So the fact that he played two first-class games in our regional setup and then went to England, he could have easily said, look, I'll take the time off, I'll focus on T20 preparation. But the fact that he played those two first-class games and then the five here in England, I think it tells you very seriously that he believes he's got to score runs and get wickets sort of to just get back in the reckoning. And he scored a big 100 on the final day against Kent. It was a fantastic innings, 123 from 110 balls. And it's the most dominant I've seen his batting since probably that Zimbabwe series where he got the 100, I would think, early 2023. And he's gotten starts, he's batted well, but he hasn't really been able to kick on. So I think that 100 was massive from his perspective, but from a West Indian perspective as well. To see Jason Holder, who we all know can easily average over 30 in test cricket, back in the runs and back at his best. Yeah. And how about uh, Jaden Seals? Because I, I listened to your assessment of um, his performances and being top of the wicket-taking table with a 23 in Division 2. What I would like for you to do, though, is give me a comparison between Division 2 in England and the level that we are, are well, that we have experienced in regional four-day cricket here. Yeah, so the, the way their tier system works, definitely Division 1 is, is a quite high standard. Yes. But I think what they probably have in Division 2 over the Caribbean is maybe the influx of some international players. So you've got guys like Jaden Seals is one, obviously, who plays in Test cricket. But Karun Nair is another one who's got triple 100 in Test cricket. Um, and he plays in Division 2. I think the standard, obviously, is not as high as Division 1. But you've got a few England players. Joe Root, Harry Brook, both play for Yorkshire. They're in Division 2. So you're still facing international quality. Whereas I find at times in our regional setup, a lot of the Test players, obviously, are multi-format players. So you don't get that international quality throughout. So that's what I think they probably have on us. But look, I think both standards is quite high and, and it's not easy cricket. And I think when you put the conditions onto that for someone like a Seals, it makes things even more complex. And speaking to him actually, Ricardo, he has, he has really enjoyed his time in England. Yeah. He's, he's worked with James Kirtley, their um, lead fast bowling coach. And one thing he expressed to me, he always struggled bowling to left hand. As you look at his record, only 11 of his 37 test wickets has come against the left hander. Mm. But what he's done for Sussex, he's destroyed left handers. And he's got the ball to swing late. He told me he's made some technical adjustments up there. And I think he told me, and he told, said in an interview, that he's ready to go back next year. So clearly they've done something well to sort of want him to keep hungry for more. And look, it's been a tough journey for him this last year with the injuries, but it's fantastic to see this young prospect back. And you look at Seals, Shamar Joseph, Alzari Joseph, Kima Roach, Jason Holder. It's exciting times for our fast bowling crop and what we're producing. Yeah, and you know, Brendan McCollum had that very difficult conversation with James Anderson to say, listen, man, this summer is going to be it. We don't have you in our plans. Beyond that, 
Is there a lesson to be learned for the West Indies selectors when it comes on to Kimar Roach? I think Kimar Roach is well aware. He said in that same interview that Moray referenced, he said he understands at his age he's going to have to keep taking wickets in order to stay in the team. And I think this is a big series for Kimar Roach because his away record hasn't lived up to expectation over the years. England obviously is a good place for him. He has a decent record there and he's played three seasons. But he's going to have to start taking more wickets away from home to stay in the reckoning because you have a lot more competition for places within the squad. But I think our regional tournament, we had some guys like Jeremiah Louis, we've had Minley and Anderson Phillip in and around. Yeah, Roach but, will but, understand that he's got to take wickets this series. Yeah, but Nikhil, it's slightly different, isn't it? Because the England and Wales cricket board didn't say to James Anderson, well, once you continue to take wickets, you'll be in the team. They said to James Anderson... We're going to Australia at, what, the end of 2025, and we don't see you at 43 years old being part of that plan. And therefore, let's end it here so we have enough time for the players that we do see as part of our plans to get the opportunities to build towards that. That's different from saying, well, whenever you stop taking wickets, we'll stop picking you. Um, should there be that sort of conversation with Kimar Roach or... Are we not there yet? No, I don't think we're there yet. And it's a different situation as well. England play a lot more test cricket than the West Indies. They will play a lot more leading up to the Ashes. And you understand they're planning for the Ashes. I think Kim Arroyo obviously is younger than James Anderson. He's got more in the tank. Um, I don't think he's finished by any means. And that six foot he took two days ago tells you all you need to know. His ability against left-handers for me, Ricardo, he's still, for me, in very right up there in test bowlers when it comes to bowling to left-handers. And I don't think it's, it's time for us to, to end Kimar Roach's career just yet. He has too much to offer, and he's been too good of a server, I think, to West Indies cricket in terms of his wicket-taking ability for us to just put to the wayside. I think he has a lot more to give and also help the younger players coming up, the younger bowlers sort of get a taste of what test cricket is all about. So when I look at England's situation with the more test cricket, probably a few more options to pick from as well. I think Kimar Roach is safe as houses in my books, if I was selected. Can't wait until he is bowling coach, Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nikhil says if he is selector, Kimara is still playing, okay? So Nikhil is in charge for today. Nikhil, thank you so much for, of course, your input on today's show. We look forward to chatting with you again soon. We have a lot more cricket coming up. Yeah, that's my favourite, you know, I can't wait. I and know. I... As well. He's back. Oh, God. <laughs> Bye, Nikhil. That's the only bad thing you said today. We're out of time. Take care, Nikhil. We'll chat soon. Nikhil is happy to have you back, Ricardo. Everybody is happy to have me back, Mariah. Like who? Nobody else is here. Lance left. <laughs> <laughs> Break time. <laughs>